Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan. Um, long time no see, but you know I've been I've taken some time away. Uh, take take some time away from uh, League of Legends uh, while we are in between the um, uh, regular seasons and the now the world world's tournament that's coming up. So I'll have a lot of contents on that. But today we actually have a big UCL Champions League soccer slate. So I'll be diving into the soccer slate here for DFS. So yeah, let's dive in. It's a five game slate. Um, it's a very interesting slate. Uh, what used to be a six game slate, now the Napoli game actually got postponed to tomorrow, but now it's a five game slate. Um, uh, you know, there are some big, big name teams on the slate, but they're not the biggest favorites as we have seen before on like other slates. So I think that makes it for a very interesting uh, GPP slate where you can completely fade um, some of the big name teams, in my opinion, and find some value in some of the lower tier teams that you haven't heard of or you're just not familiar with their players. So, yeah, let's look at the three game, uh, three o'clock slate Eastern time. Uh, like I said, it's a five game slate. Here you see, um, this is Bobata that I use for odds um, purposes. Um, buying Leverkusen and Atletico Madrid, basically a toss-up game you see here. And most likely that's going to be um, a low, low scoring game, in my opinion. And generally, I pointed this out earlier on the, in our Discord channel uh, for soccer DFS. Um, for Champions League, at least, you want to chase some goal scoring opportunities, um, unlike in EPL, where we tend to favor a lot of the higher floor guys and, you know, more of a chalky cashew plays because in champions league, generally there tends to be more goals scored and without uh, rostering a player that scores goals, it's really hard to cash on, on champions league soccer slates in my opinion. So that's something I will emphasize throughout this video. Um, but I just wanted to point it, point that out. Um, when you are thinking about uh, Ross, you know, your, your roster construction from a macro standpoint, you want to have at least one or two players that you think will score in a favorable game script. So that's where I'm going to um, lean on and on this slate as well. So as mentioned, Leverkusen, Atletico Madrid, and this is not a favorable game to, you know, kind of target because as you see, it's going to be an, it's the odd say that it's going to be an under 2.5 goals scored in this matchup. As you guys know, um, Atletico Madrid um, tends to play a little more defensively than any other teams, basically in Champions League. So any Atletico Madrid game is disgusting to me. Um, that's something that I sometimes most often fade. Um, away from so um, that's where I'm gonna probably gonna lean on as well I, th I do think Leverkusen um, is an interesting piece I think most people will fade them playing against Atletico Madrid um, uh, and they probably should I think for multi MME GPPs uh, yeah I think you can target Leverkusen's pieces but I'll go into that further when I look at the projected starting lineups Bayern Munich versus Barcelona, on the other hand, it's going to be a high, higher scoring game. Um, as you see, Bayern Munich at home is a favorite at minus 110. Um, I agree with that, even though their form has been, you know, subpar to good. I think they've been good, just not great, as great as the old Bayern Munich that we used to see. And then Barcelona, I mean, I think they've been playing much better this season compared to last season, to say the least. Um, but this is going to be a juggernaut match that you want to target, I think, from the DFS standpoint. I think there's going to be a lot of goals and a lot of goal scoring opportunities, chances uh, created um, here in this matchup. So I'll go further into that as well when we're looking at lineups. And then Porto versus Club Brugge. Um, I don't agree with these odds. I think Club Brugge, that definitely has a shot here. Um, Porto has been playing well, but not to the point where they deserve the minus 240 odds, in my opinion, at home. Um, I do think this is going to be a, a more competitive match match than the odds indicate. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but you see the for the implied total goals here, you know, sitting at 2.5 slash 3. Um, over so do you you know people odds makers do think that there are going to be a lot of goals to go around in this matchup and then the last two matches are between Liverpool and Ajax uh, Liverpool is at home a favorite at what minus 180 
yeah, I mean, there are going to be a lot of uh, people who are going to jam in as many Liverpool pieces as they want. But Ajax is not not a I mean, they're no joke. I, I think Ajax is good. And you've seen Liverpool get exposed before, especially in the last Champions League match against Napoli. Um, I think Liverpool's defense is not that great. Um, so I do think Ajax's offensive powerhouse can definitely penetrate through Liverpool's uh, defense there. Um, that's why the odds are uh, the implied total goals are really high as well. Um, so yeah, I mean they're all gonna like I said. So you see here in, on the odds maker, right? Like during EPL, you are used to seeing like 1.5, 2.5 goals, right? But you see 3.5, 3.5 here in the even these two matches, and then three here in the Porto match. Like you see here, that's why you kind of have to chase the goal scoring um, players here. Um, as as for Liverpool, you'll see like Salah and. You know, for Mino and whoever starts for Liverpool at top, up top, and then for Ajax, you'll see it, you know, when I go into the roster uh, starting lineups. And then the last match on the slate, which I think will be kind of boring in my opinion, but kind of sneaky GPP play would be the Marseille versus Frankfurt play. Uh, Marseille is at, is at home, a favorite at minus 115. Um, I kind of agree with that. I think Marseille has been playing just as well as Frankfurt has been as well in the Champions League tournament, at least. Um, but and they're at home um, with the crowd behind them. And I do think there will be a lot of goals here as well. So I say that about all the all the games except for the Atletico Madrid. Right. But um, but that's the truth. And I do think this game will have at least two goals um, and the odds kind of agree. Well, they do agree with me. It's sitting at two point five slash three. Um, so let's go into the starting lineups here. Um, I'll go from the like the heaviest favorite, which is uh, Porto that I don't agree with, and then Liverpool, and then Marseille, um, and then go from there. Okay. All right, Porto, like I said, is the biggest favorite at home at minus two fifty. Um, Club Brook, like I said, they played decent last last game in Champions League. I mean, they I think they deserve to like score more than one goal here against Leverkusen here. You see. Um, Porto lost um, to Atletico Madrid two to one in the crazy, crazy 90th minute goals, like three goals scored in the extra time, I think, at the end of at the end of the second half. Um, I don't think that's ever going to happen again, but, you know, who knows? But uh, Club Brugge, like I said, they played really well against Leverkusen. So I do think they have a pretty good shot. I think defense travels on the road well. Um, but Porto, you know, since they're the biggest favorite, I'll talk about them first. I think the pieces that you want to target here at the most is the top here and the wing wingers. Um, Evan Nilsson, I mean, I definitely think he will net a goal um, in this matchup if there are going to be goals scored here. Um, I, I like Pepe and Galeno. Um, I think Galeno takes some PKs. Yeah, um, I think Galeno has been in really good form lately. Um, so I would definitely prefer Galeno over Pepe. Um, and then Sanusi likes to cross the ball quite a bit. Um, Joao Mar uh, Mario, I mean, I think he's okay. But I would definitely target Evan Nielsen and then Galeno, Galeno, and then after that, Pepe, and then maybe Tony Martinez. And then for fullbacks, like I said, I, I prefer Sanusi here uh, for Porto. I think in the in terms of ceiling and the most upside, yeah, Evan Nielsen for sure. And then, But I, like I said, I like Galeno's form uh, lately, so I'll definitely target those two, even with the upside, uh, from the upside standpoint. And then Club Brugge, um, they have multiple guys that like to take set pieces and also have the good, you know, scoring upside. And it all starts with Skav Olsen. He was dirt cheap, in the, dirt cheap on the last slate. And then Vanekin. Um, and then I would probably go maybe Jucha here. Um, I think he did okay, even though his form has been really bad lately. Um, and I do think that's the byproduct of it of their team. Um, but I would definitely prefer those three pieces for a club group. Um, and after that, it's Liverpool. You guys are familiar with Liverpool pieces, but you know I'll still go over that. It all it all starts with the fullbacks, with you know TAA, uh, Alexander Arnold, and then whoever starts on the left back between Robertson and Simikas. I think Simikas could start today. Um, I think Robertson has been up and down. Um, so we'll see. I think he may be out already. Yeah. So Simikas will probably be a priority on a classic slate, in my opinion. Um, just to plug him in, just like uh, TAA. I think that's gonna be an easy, easy def defender, chalky place to play for cash games. 
um, because they like to cross the ball a lot. And I think this is going to be more of an open match with Ajax the way that they like to play. Um, and then for Liverpool with the scoring upside, yeah, I mean, anybody up top here at the top three. And I only say that because they really like to kind of control the ball up top with Diaz and Salah. Salah has been up and down as well, but I think, you know, at any point for GPP, I mean, any of them can score uh, score a brace or a hat trick even, in my opinion. So I would go for there. And then on the other hand, Ajax, like I said, I really like Ajax for GPP. Um, they've been playing pretty well. Their offense has been really good. I mean, it all started with Tadic. Uh, he is the goal scorer, main engine for that team. Um, but after that, I mean, I think Bergoy, um, he likes to uh, cross the ball quite a bit. So I would definitely target these two guys. And then after that, I think on anybody up top, uh, Kudos and Bergwijn. Bergwijn has been okay. I think he kind of find, found his second home after, you know, trying to play with Tottenham. But I think any of these two guys, just like Liverpool, I mean, really for GPP, I think any of these two guys up top would be the priorities after Tadek and Bergwijn. And then let's see the next like high scoring matchup that I am targeting is the Bayern Munich and Barcelona as mentioned. Um, I'll go with Bayern Munich since they're the favorite. Um, it all starts with Joshua Kimmich who likes to, who takes their set pieces and cross the ball and create scoring opportunities. And after that, like, really like whoever starts up top, I would just pair him up with Sané or Mane or Mueller. I don't know if I'll play with Musiala if he plays, but looks like he's been scoring some goals, but you know, compared, I think Mane and Sané and Mueller kind of come pro as priorities first. And then Alfonso Davis and Pavard, yeah, I mean, I think they can definitely cross the ball and create scoring opportunities, so I wouldn't mind them. And then on the other side, Barcelona, it all, it all starts with here Lewandowski. Like, do you want to roster Lewandowski in a tough matchup against Bayern Munich on at on the road against his former team? I mean, I think there's a big revenge narrative that you're kind of going for. But I think from a cash standpoint, I don't know if I can go there. Um, I think for GPP, yeah. I mean, I think revenge game, maybe a hat trick. Like, uh, you know, I can definitely see that happening. But from them, for Barcelona, though, from the highest floor standpoint, it all starts with Dembele. Um, I think Dembele is the, you know, the set maker, set piece takers and everything for Barcelona. So I would definitely target Dembele and Lewandowski. Um, and then Rafinha, if he starts, um, that, you know, you can definitely target him as well. Um, but I'm not interested in any other pieces, maybe, unless they start up top here in the top three. Pedri, if, especially if he starts behind Dembele like this, I don't think I'm going to prioritize him. Or Gavi, he's cheap, but I don't know if I'll play him as well. Kunde had a, an assist last game, I think, but I don't think I'm going to go there today just because of the matchup. Um, And then the second uh, biggest matchup, uh, that I would like here is Marseille. And then I'll talk about the disgusting Atletico Madrid game. Marseille, yeah, a favorite at home slightly. Um, I think it all starts with under Payet. Um, I don't think I'm going to play with a penalty play any Sanchez, even though he's been scoring. I think his price is like ridiculously high for, for his, his role on the team. Um, I'm going to go with Payet and under, um, since he's under, under. And then Klaus. Um, I don't I don't like Nuno Tavares here, um, but I like Klaus as like a scoring upside, a like crossing upside. So I'll definitely target those three people under Payet and Klaus for a high floor and scoring upside people. And then on the other on the other hand, I, I'd go with Lindstrom and then I would go with Mulani. Mulani has been in good form, at least from the times that I watched. It looks like he had a bad uh, Bundesliga game, but um, Lindstrom, let me see. Yeah, Goatze has been okay. Um, but I, I still target Lindstrom and Goatze and then Mulani. That's probably where I'm going to go. Um, other than that, I'm not interested in any of their like fullbacks or anything like that. So, But I do think it's going to be a decent uh, sneaky GPP play to target these guys here on, in this match. And then, like I said, for, for the Leverkusen and Madrid with, with the lowest um, implied goal-scoring odds here, um, for Leverkusen, I mean, it's... Who do you go with? Musa Diaby? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, Diaby will probably have the highest floor on this in this matchup, in my opinion, uh, controlling the game, probably. And then Atletico Madrid, it all starts with 
I don't even know where to start there. For Atletico Madrid, they split set pieces. They don't like to create scoring opportunities. They just play more defensively. But I think the most goal goal scoring upside player that they have is Joao Felix. Um, but I'm not really interested in any of them. I think they're cheap, like the midfielders, but they just don't have a high floor that I'd like to see in a player like that. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, let's say, if, uh, you know, my favorite plays obviously will be the Liverpool fullbacks with TAA and then Simicas if, if they start. Um, but then after that, I would probably target. Probably this matchup, I think Bayern Munich and Barcelona, I think Dembele would be an interesting, um, probably, you know, would be a core for just the pricing that they have. I think Dembele has a bigger role than his pricing indicates. So I like that a lot. And then this Porto match is interesting. I think Brugge, like I said, they make an interesting GPP play with Scott Olsen and then probably Jutja. Um, here and then Porto, Porto, yeah, I mean, Galeno, Evan Nilsson. Yeah, I would go with those two. I think in cash, you kind of have to have one of these two just because they're the biggest favorite. Um, but I, I, I like Alenio in his form and Evan Nilsson from goal scoring opportunity standpoint. So, yeah, like I said, lots of goals. We'll see if you can roster those goal scoring, uh, you know, people, uh, players. Um, if you want to see the goal scoring odds, this is where I usually go. Um, I don't want to look at the Atletico Madrid game. I want to see the... Evan, Evan Nelson and then Galeno. So I would just click on the matchup here um, for from Bovada. Uh, and then I'll scroll down all the way down to here where you see the anytime goal scoring odds. Um, and you see Galeno is at plus 185 and that's really good. Um, and you see, let's see, Evan Nelson at plus 110. So yeah, I mean, like I said, I like them even before I looked at these goal scoring odds. Like I said, Galeno is in great form. He might be in one every single one of my lineups, probably. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But if you guys have any questions or just want to chat um soccer right before the slate locks or one hour before the slate locks when the, the starting lineups come out, uh let me know. I'd be happy to uh provide any insights. Otherwise, yeah, good luck out there. And this video was sponsored by True DFS. So please, please hit the like button. That would mean a lot to me and true to true DFS as well. Um, yeah, good luck out there. Have a good one.